Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in today's lesson I'd like to talk to you about rotational kinematics. Our objectives include understanding the analogy between translational and rotational kinematics, using the right-hand rule to associate angular velocity with a rotating object, and applying equations of translational and rotational motion to solve a variety of problems. So let's start by talking about radians and degrees. In degrees, once around a circle is 360 degrees. In radians, however, a circle is 2 pi. So those, a 2 pi is equivalent to 360 degrees. Now a radian measures the distance around an arc equal to the length of the arc's radius. So we could say that the distance around an arc, delta s, is the circumference, or 2 pi r, if you're going once around the circle. So let's take and say, for example, we want to convert 90 degrees to radians. How would I do that? Well, let's start by writing 90 degrees, and we'll multiply that by 1, but I'm going to write 1 in a special way again. I'm going to write it as 2 pi radians over 360 degrees. They're the same thing, so the same thing over the same thing is 1, just written a little bit differently. When I do that then, my degrees are going to cancel out, and I'm going to end up with pi over 2 radians or that comes out to be about 1.57 radians if I put it in decimal format. Let's try going the other way. Let's start with 6 radians and try and convert that to degrees. So now I'm going to multiply that by 360 degrees over 2 pi radians. Again, really just multiplying by 1. And when I do that, I come up with about 344 degrees. All right. As we talk about rotational motion as opposed to translational motion, what we've been used to, we're going to have to talk about a couple different quantities. One of those is the analog to linear displacement, which is angular displacement. Linear position or displacement, we typically wrote as delta r or delta s. Maybe you talked about it as delta x in one dimension. Lots of different ways you typically see um, linear distance or displacement written. Angular position or displacement is given by delta theta, where if you look here on our picture on the right, if we start with an object over here at time t equals 0, and it, by time t, it's passed through this piece of the arc around a circle then it has some translational displacement, but it's also gone some distance around the arc, which gives it an angular or rotational displacement. We will call that delta theta. Now the linear distance traveled, s is equal to r times theta, or change in s is equal to r delta theta, where s here is what we call our translational displacement. and theta is going to be our rotational displacement. Nice conversion between the two. We could also look at the analog of linear to angular or rotational velocity. Linear speed or velocity we've written as v, where if we still have our particle, our object moving in this direction, here at time t, at this point in time, it has a linear velocity tangent to the circle, in that direction, v. But we could also describe it by looking at its angular rotational velocity, omega. And these are both vectors where linear velocity is change in displacement divided by time. Angular rotational velocity is change in angle divided by time. And the direction of that vector, omega, is a little bit trickier to deal with. Because it's constantly changing as you go around the circle, we're going to describe its direction using the right hand rule. What we're going to do is take our right hand and wrap your right hand in the direction of the particle's velocity around the circle, and your thumb will be the actual direction of that angular velocity vector. So we're using a right hand rule where your thumb points in the direction of the actual angular velocity vector, even though the particle is moving in a circle down in that plane. Okay, And when we do this, sometimes we have to deal with how we draw vectors in three dimensions. 
If we have something coming toward us out of the plane, we draw it as a dot with a circle around it, as if we're looking at an arrow coming toward you. What you see first is the very point of the arrow. So that's coming out of the plane of the page or the screen. If it's going away from you, the thing you would see would be the X, the fletchings on the, uh, on the arrow, the feathers on the arrow. So as it's going away from you, as it would be coming toward me, the last thing you would see would be the feathers. So that looks like the X that's going into the plane. And we can convert between linear and angular velocity fairly easily. Linear velocity or translational velocity is just omega times r or omega then is velocity divided by r, divided by your radius. So let's take a look at a sample problem here. Find the magnitude of Earth's angular velocity in radians per second. Well, omega is going to be delta theta divided by the time interval. And one time around for the Earth, that's two pi radians, takes 24 hours. But I don't want that in terms of hours, I want it in terms of seconds. So I'll multiply by one, writing one hour as 3600 seconds, so that now my hours will make a ratio of one, cancel out, and I end up with an angular velocity of 7.27 .27 times 10 to the minus five radians per second. All right, we could also talk about linear versus angular acceleration. Linear acceleration is given by A, and angular acceleration is given by alpha, where ang linear acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. Angular acceleration is change in angular velocity divided by time. And again, the direction is still given by the right hand rule. The direction it's accelerating as it goes around a circle for a rotational or angular acceleration Rotate the fingers of your right hand in that direction and your thumb will point in the direction of that angular acceleration vector. If we want to convert between the two in similar fashion, A equals R alpha or alpha equals A divided by R. Let's take a look at another sample problem, this time looking at a bear on a unicycle. A bear rides a unicycle. If the unicycle wheel begins at rest and accelerates uniformly in a counterclockwise direction to an angular velocity of 15 RPMs in a time of six seconds, find the angular acceleration of the unicycle wheel. Well, the first thing I wanna do here is I need to convert the revolutions per minute into radians per second. So we'll convert 15 RPMs to radians per second. I'm going to do that by writing that 15 RPMs is 15 revolutions per minute. And we'll convert minutes to seconds first by writing that as one again. I know that one minute is 60 seconds. Minutes will make a ratio of one. And now I need to convert revolutions to radians. And I know that one revolution is two pi radians. So my revolutions will make a ratio of one, they'll cancel out, and I'm left with about 1.57 radians per second. All right, now to find the angular acceleration of the unicycle wheel, alpha equals delta omega over t, change in angular velocity divided by time, which is going to be the final value minus the initial value divided by our time interval, or 1.57 radians per second, minus zero since it starts at rest. And our time interval here was six seconds, so that's going to be about 0 0.26 radians per second squared. Hopefully you've started to see some of the um, correlation between translational and rotational variables, or translational and angular variables. For displacement, it can be written quite a few different ways, depending on the book you're using, teacher. You may see delta S, you may see D, you may see delta X, sometimes delta R. 
In angular variables, we're usually talking about delta theta. Velocity is V, angular velocity, omega. Translational acceleration, A, angular acceleration, alpha. And time, T, is the same between them. And the variable translations going from one to another is also very straightforward. S equals R theta, if we want the translational displacement, again using S this time. Angular theta equals S over R. Velocity V equals R omega. Angular omega equals V over R. Acceleration translational A equals R alpha. Angular alpha equals A over R. And of course, time is equal to time. No change there. But notice how this pattern holds up. R, R, R. S over R, V over R, A over R. Once you learn that pattern, you don't have to memorize all of these anymore. We even have kinematic equation parallels. Our translational kinematic equations, we had V equals V initial plus acceleration times time we can get our rotational kinematic equation by just replacing the translational kinematic variable with the rotational kinematic variable. So our rotational version would be omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. Or translational, we had delta x equals v initial t plus one half a t squared. In the rotational world, that's delta theta equals omega initial t plus one half alpha t squared. Or final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two a delta x. The rotational equivalent to this, final angular velocity squared equals initial angular velocity squared plus two alpha delta theta, just replacing the translational variable with the rotational variable. Let's take a look at another problem. A minotaur spins Nicholas the Knight in a circle of radius one meter at a constant angular velocity of 60 revolutions per minute. What is Nicholas the Knight's linear velocity? Wow, that does not look pleasant. Well, we know our radius is one meter. Our angular velocity, omega, is 60 revs per minute. And let's convert that to radians per second again. So that's one minute over 60 seconds times two pi radians per revolution. Our revolutions will make a ratio of one, minutes will make a ratio of one, and I will be left with 60 times two pi divided by 60, or just two pi radians per second. Now I can find the translational linear velocity. V equals R omega, where R is one meter, and omega is two pi radians per second. So I end up with two pi meters per second. Important to note here, even though I keep writing radians, officially radians is not a unit. It's unitless. That just helps me keep track of what I'm talking about. So when I multiply through here, meters times what's really not a unit divided by seconds is just meters per second. All right. Nicholas is really having a bad day because a dragon now roasts Nicholas the knight on a spit. Hmm, <laughs> something smells tasty. With Nicholas rotating at a radius of 0.3 meters from the axis of rotation, what is the translational displacement of Nicholas as he travels through two complete revolutions? Well, in order to find this, the translational displacement, S equals R theta, where our radius is 0 0.3 meters, and theta, if he goes through two complete revolutions, that's going to be two pi times two, or four pi radians, which gives me 12.6 meters. All right, coming back to a slightly nicer world, at the annual teddy bear picnic, four teddy bear children climb on a roundabout for a ride. 
if the roundabout accelerates from rest to an angular velocity of 0.3 radians per second in a time of 10 seconds, what is its angular acceleration? What is its linear acceleration at a radius of 1.5 meters from the axis of rotation? Well, let's start out by finding its angular acceleration. To do this, I'm going to write down everything I know. Omega initial is 0. Omega final is 0 0.3 radians per second. We don't know delta theta. We don't know alpha. And we know the time is 10 seconds. We want to know what alpha, our angular acceleration, is. So I'll use my kinematic equations to find that angular acceleration alpha is omega minus omega initial divided by time, or 0 0.3 radians per second, minus 0 over 10 seconds, which is just going to be 0 0.03 radians per second squared. Now to find the linear acceleration at a radius of 1.5 meters from the axis of rotation, A equals R alpha, which is going to be 1.5 meters times R alpha 0 0.03 radians per second squared, or 0 0.045 meters per second squared. All right, I think we've got time for one more problem here. A carpenter cuts a piece of wood with a high-powered circular saw. The saw blade accelerates from rest with an angular acceleration of 14 radians per second squared to a maximum speed of 15,000 RPMs. What is the maximum speed of the saw in radians per second? Well, we've got 15,000 revolutions per minute. We'll convert minutes to seconds. One minute, I know, is 60 seconds. And we know we have 2 pi radians per revolution. So minutes will make a ratio of 1. Revolutions will make a ratio of 1. And I'm left with 15,000 times 2 pi divided by 60, or 1570 radians per second. How long does it take the saw to reach its maximum speed? Another kinematics problem. Initial omega, initial angular velocity is 0. Final angular velocity we just determined is 1570 radians per second. We don't know the angular displacement. Alpha, our angular acceleration, is given as 14 radians per second squared. And we're trying to find the time, how long. Well, I'll start off with the kinematic equation. Angular velocity equals initial angular velocity plus alpha times time. And rearranging this to find time, T then equals omega minus omega initial divided by alpha, which is 1570 minus 0 over 14 radians per second squared, which implies that, oops, we're not looking for omega, we're looking for time. Time equals 112 seconds. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on rotational kinematics as we begin our study of rotational motion. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Make it a great day, everybody, and we'll just tell Nicholas the night that, you know, we hope you just escape. Take care.